Let's talk about what I thought about my recent flight with Swiss Air, which is my first time flying Swiss Air business class. I've always flew Emirates, I flew EVR before, American Airlines, even Alaska Airlines, but never Swiss Air before. And I was really curious. So for context, I live in Asia and I was trying to find a way to go from Bali to Antarctica because I'm going to a conference in Antarctica. And it so happened to be that it made more sense for me to first fly fly to the Netherlands to be one and a half day actually with my family and then from there to fly to Buenos Aires where we're gonna start our Antarctica journey. So the first flight I took is a different video that's with Emirates from Bali to Dubai, Dubai to Amsterdam and then now I was embarking on a flight from Amsterdam to Zurich. Zurich to Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo to Buenos Aires. So a whole journey. Both flights, basically 20 hours or so. It has been a few really intense days and right now I'm sitting in the hotel in Buenos Aires. I just showered, I just freshed up and I want to give you a review on my flight with Swiss Air. So first of all, when I arrived in Amsterdam and I went through all the checking in and everything, I went to the Star Alliance business class lounge just to sit and work for a bit. I also had a Coke Zero and I could see that there's really Dutch food like bread and cheese. A little bit basic, not my favorite business lounge, but it was okay. Okay guys, I'm actually running because I stayed a little bit too long in the business class lounge. It's gonna be long ass flight with Swiss Air, my first time flying Swiss Air. Let's see if they can beat Emirates. Then I went to the gate and I boarded my flight to Zurich. But it was a pretty short flight, so it was not real business class. It was, again, similar to what I had in Alaska Airlines and American Airlines, where it's just a normal chair with a bit more space. But it was normal. I did also get some food. However, again, I did not select this food and I also was not allowed to choose. And I think this time this happened because I even got an email from Swiss Air that I had to check in manually at the desk to confirm my payment method or something, which was super weird. But yeah, that did mean that I couldn't select my seat and I couldn't select my meals. So for all of you guys bitching about my EVR video saying that, oh, you can always select your food, it happened again and I couldn't. Then in Zurich we had to change terminals which was a bit tricky because my flight, the flight from Amsterdam to Zurich was delayed so we left about 40 minutes too late. My layover was only about supposed to be like one hour or so so everyone was running in Zurich to get to this flight to Sao Paulo and I was not running but I was definitely walking fast. We had to even take a sky train to a different terminal and it was a bit stressful. Now luckily that flight also left too late. Made it very close, very very close. Business class already finished boarding. I'm pretty sure I have to go here. You see I'm the last person. Oops. But we made it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm at 9A. Okay. My camera died. So I'm recording now a few days later, which is okay. So the first flight from Amsterdam to Zurich is very short, kind of normal-ish business class where you just have a little bit more space for your seat. I did get some food there, but it was super random. It was veal, which I don't like. It's baby cow. Ugh. It was not nice. I did get chocolate like the chocolate and yeah that flight was just basic it was very short i watched some netflix on my phone and uh, it was over before i knew it so i was trying to explain the seats right but basically how the seats are different in an emirates plane versus a swiss airplane emirates you have one seat on the window two in the middle one on the window for business class swiss air you have one or two on the window sides as well so if you're with two you don't know the person you kind of have to climb over to get out so i was like oh no don't want that. When I saw the seats, I wasn't sure I was gonna enjoy this flight, but actually I got a really good seat and it's very spacious, like even more spacious than Emirates business class. And maybe I'm just lucky because I have a front seat. I'm at 7A, but the seat looks really, really good so far. I was scared the seats were gonna be small, but I was super lucky that I got the single seats at the window on both flights. And then the actual business class cabins turned out to be bigger than Emirates. I had a huge space and also because I was all the way on the front, as in like, you know, where you have the toilets in the plane, I was sitting right there. I was at 7A, I believe, which also meant that I think I had more leg room in front of me, which was super great, you know? Other than that, the seats turned out to be really pretty nice in terms of design. Like I like the Swiss, you know, like checkered style of the seats. All the interior was amazing. The design was really beautiful. There was so much storage space, which on the Emirates plane, it was not really a lot of storage place there were little cabinets there were little drawers and things and like so many places to put your stuff 
which was really great. Even my bag fit in a specific section in the front, which was amazing. The seat could obviously turn into a flat bed completely. Then I did notice that as I made the seat go down, my feet started to touch the front. So I had to scoop over a little bit up so that, you know, my feet wouldn't touch the front. But then my head was kind of touching it. So I don't think it's made for super tall people. For my dad, he would definitely have to be cross-legged or something like that to be able to lay there. A little bit shorter, I think, than Emirates, the, the seat size. Another thing was that they don't provide you with the mattress. So when I fly Emirates, they give me a mattress to put on top for you to lay down so that you don't have all those annoying things in your back from the actual seat. And this one didn't have that. So also because I had to kind of scoop up, the pillow was in a weird way under my back and it actually did really hurt my back after, you know, laying there for like it's an 11 hour flight. I didn't really have back pain from that. And this is a benefit and a con, I guess, at the same time, right? So laying down completely flat on this seat was uncomfortable. And the reason why is because there is some kind of air below in the seat. And sometimes it randomly starts expanding or getting smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger. And I was like, what's going on? What is this? Why does this keep happening, you know? And then later I flipped open on the right side, a little panel. And then I saw that you can change the location of that air below. So you can move it up or down. You can inflate it or deflate it. And then I played around with that a little bit, but it didn't make it too much better. But you can customize that. And there's massage. Now it's not like a proper massage chair where it's like, you know, but that air flow in the pillow can, kind of does this when you click on massage and it's like for one minute. So I did it a few times, but then I was like, okay, I'm not really, I'm not really feeling it, you know? So it's a benefit and a con as in like a con because when you want to lie completely flat, there is this weird air pillow thing and you can move it. But for me, I couldn't find, I couldn't put it at a comfortable spot. Benefit is that I guess it's kind of, you could have a massage, but then again, it was not like super great massage as well. <laughs> That's an interesting, interesting choice that they made. You know, I'm not hating it. I'm not loving it. I don't know. Interesting. So that's about the seat. Then the food. Okay, so actually I do really like the Swiss style of food. So it was a lot of cold cuts, a lot of cheese and things like that, which I did really enjoy. On this flight, I decided not to drink because I was like, if I'm gonna drink every time I fly, it's not gonna be great. So I got an alcohol-free welcome drink. I went for alcohol-free because if I drink on every flight, it will not be very healthy. Then I had to select what breakfast I wanted on a kind of a menu card with check boxes and what I wanted for breakfast. And I chose a bunch of random things, which was, it turned out to be a really nice breakfast, even at hot chocolate. So then before we landed, we had a lunch, which also pretty good. I liked it. I love cold cuts, cheese, meats things like that. I did also have some dessert. It was also pretty good. And then throughout the flight, I got some snacks. I got so much chocolate. They have lint chocolate, which is my favorite chocolate. So Swiss Air, you win the chocolate game over Emirates. Your chocolate is like, oh my God. Lint chocolate was so good. And then also the Swiss Air, just the milk chocolate bar. Oh, so good. Oh my God, really nice. This airplane did not have a lounge like Emirates, whereas Emirates always on these big planes has a business class and first class lounge. This plane didn't have a lounge, so I didn't get to walk much. It was more like in my seat, going toilet, which was right in front of me, right? Because I was in the front, going back to my seat. So I didn't get to walk or move as much, but it was okay. In the Netherlands, it was evening. So it was a night flight officially. I did try to sleep as much as I could. Didn't really watch movie, just a little bit here and there, but I slept pretty much throughout. Did some journaling. There is earplugs, socks, a bamboo toothbrush, which is cute. Toothpaste, also natural. Lip balm, eye mask. And then this bag, somehow something inside. This turns into like a storage box, I guess, for, I don't know. And that was it. Now we had this great flight from Zurich. Sao Paulo. Then we had also like an hour to change in Sao Paulo and that was also a little bit like uh, what's it gonna be like, what's gonna happen, but the thing was... Okay guys, one hour to go through security, passport control and to go back into the same plane, it's just gonna get fuel and then from Sao Paulo we go to Buenos Aires. It was with the same flight number, 
same plane. So that was a good sign, you know, no self transfer, not having to grab my luggage and stuff, but they had to fuel. And normally if they fuel a plane, you have to get out of course with all your stuff. So what did we do? We had to get out with all our stuff. We had to actually this time walk down the plane, get into a bus. And then the bus took us to a terminal. We had to do passport control briefly and put our hand luggage through a scanner. So boarded that plane. I was lucky I got the same seat on my own on the side, on the front. Since this was a shorter flight, I just planned to relax. I watched a little bit of something. Then we arrived from Sao Paulo into Buenos Aires. And then of course there, got off the plane, went through passport control, then got to the baggage claim. My bags were there pretty much right away. Got on a little card, put my bags there. Okay, now this is important. If you're traveling to Buenos Aires, for me, for some reason, I expected that I was gonna be at the airport and I was gonna feel unsafe. I don't know, I had this expectation that it was gonna be like people, man, taxi, boom, trying to take my bag or whatever. But it was even more quiet and peaceful than Bali. It was. I felt more safe than in Bali airport. So yeah, I was just prepared for the worst. So what I did, I waited inside the airport on the side already uh, before I left Amsterdam. So in Amsterdam, I downloaded this app called Airlo and I can highly recommend it. It's basically a way to get eSIM cards. And in this way you get internet or you can top up uh, calling or texting and you don't need to get a physical sim card which is so annoying it's an e-sim that you can easily install on your phone and this is not sponsored guys because i don't even know them but i've been using them for a while so i already bought the e-sim for argentina i already activated that in the netherlands so in argentina i just had to turn it on then i had to go into airplane mode and go out of that and then right away i had 4g in argentina boom easy you know okay so my final conclusion actually about swiss air is that they're really good i definitely wouldn't mind flying with them again i felt very safe it was pretty clean you know and in general it was just a very pleasant flight and the staff were really sweet they were really kind and i don't know if that's maybe a culture thing like they were they were just very sweet kind helpful the swiss and i think there were swiss crew members that were like serving my aisle but it was a really pleasant experience for sleeping and the seat I have to dunk off some points because yeah I had back pain super bad there was no mattress so there was a bit less then there's also not a business lounge so let's say if Emirates for me would be an eight or a nine Swiss Air would be seven eight rated on this scale so yeah not bad at all can definitely recommend and if I am able to I might fly with them again in Argentina here Buenos Aires I'm gonna be staying at the park Tower Hotel from Sheraton. And if you want to see more about my Buenos Aires trip and my vlog here, then make sure to watch that video as well. If you want to see the flight that I did before this with Emirates, which was from Bali, Dubai, Dubai to Amsterdam, make sure to check that video. And if you want to know why I took two 20 hour plus flights in one week time, make sure to check my vlog about Antarctica because that's where I'm going. That's why I'm in Buenos Aires because from here we're going to Antarctica. I'm really crazy for doing this.